So Dave, I really appreciate like all the tips that you've been sharing with me when it comes to like pattern matching in C sharp. And I heard about this new thing or this this additional thing called exhaustive case cards. Can you mm -hmm. talk to me about that a little bit and maybe show yeah. me how it works? Absolutely. Yeah, I've got a demo kind of put together here that uh, shows off some of the exhaustiveness with pattern matching. So we have uh, a function that uh, takes an I enumerable of t, so a generic type parameter. And this is just basically, we're calling it a sequence. And that sequence, we can actually evaluate in the context of a switch expression. So for each of these case arms, we can do type pattern matching. So we can say if it's uh, the generic type is an array and the length is zero, that's expressed as a zero length array. That's what this, you know, we're going to return a string here in that case. Uh, likewise, if it's one, it's a single item array. If it's two, an array with two things, great. Um, otherwise, if it's just an array, we can say it's an array with more than two things because we've kind of exhaustified the fact that it's not zero, one, or two. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can expand our functionality with filtering uh, with the when clause. So we can say, if there's not anything in there, if it's an empty enumerable, uh, or if the count is less than three, then it's a small enumerable. Uh, if it's a list, an I list implementation, we can say it's some list. If it's null, we can laugh at everyone because that's a problem altogether. <laughs> Um, but we have this underscore here, and that really means catch all. So if I comment that out, you'll see that our switch keyword lights up. And the IDE is basically telling us that the switch expression doesn't handle all the possible values for the input. So it's not really exhaustive. So in order to be exhaustive, if your uh, cases are too explicit, um, you can actually have what's uh, you know this underscore here, which is basically a catch all. And we have a helper function that exemplifies calling into that and showing you with some different parameters what that might look like when it's ran. So I'm just gonna run that real quick. So a couple of things. One, I really love how you have emojis as a return in your function. Like I think everyone should return emojis whenever we have problems. <laughs> but two, this also reminds me a lot of um, the default statement instead of a switch, um, instead of switch cases. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like with that default, assuming that every other case wasn't successful, you know, just return this thing, you know, instead. So I'm guessing Absolutely. this is somewhat similar to that type of process. Absolutely. It's the 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 same kind of catch all um, concept. Yep. So as you can see here, we ran it and we've written out that an empty array is a zero length array, uh, an array with one thing is a single item, uh, an array with two things has two things, a small uh, laughing because we passed the null, all, all the fun stuff here. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, Dave, I really appreciate you sharing this for me. And for all of you that are watching, if you want to learn a little bit more about pattern matching in C Sharp, make sure you check out the links in our description below. And it also make sure you check out some of the other videos we have in our C Sharp Language Highlights series.